That Book Woman by Heather Henson, pictures by David Small. My folks and me, we live way up as up can get. So high we hardly sight a soul, except hawks a winging in the sky and critters hid among the trees. My name is Cal, and I am not the first one, nor the least one neither. But I am the oldest boy, and I can help Pap with the plowing, and I can fetch the sheep when they take a wander. And I can bring the cow home too, come evening time, which is right handy, seeing as how my sister Lark would keep her nose atwixt the pages of a book, daybreak to dusky dark, if Mama would allow. The readiest child you ever did see, that's what Pap says. Not me. I was not born to sit so stony still, a staring at some chicken scratch, and I do not fancy it one bit when Lark plays teacher, the only a school a jillion miles back down the creek. And even Lark can hardly spread her wings and fly, so now she aims to school us herself. But me, I am no scholar boy. That's why I'm the first to hear the clippity clop and spy the sorrel mare, red as clay. I am the first to know the writer is no man at all, but a lady wearing breeches for all the world to see. Of course we make that stranger kindly welcome, and she's friendly as can be, and after sips of sassy tea she lays her saddlebag upon the table, and what spills out might just as well be gold the way Lark's eyes shine penny bright, the way her hands they won't keep still, reaching out to grab a treasure. Now what that lady brings, it's sure no treasure, not to me, but books. Would you believe? A passel of books she's packed clear up the mountainside. A hard day's ride, and all for naught, I reckon. For if she aims to sell her wares just like the tinker man who travels round with pots and pans and such, it's but a plain and simple fact. We have got no greenbacks here, no shiny coins to spend, leastways not on dumb old books. Well, Pap, he takes one look at Lark and clears his throat. A trade, he says. A poke of berries for one book. My hands double fist behind my back. I yearn to speak, but daren't. It is the very poke I picked for pie, not books. To my surprise, that lady shakes her head real firm. She will not take a poke of berries, nor a mess of greens, nor anything Pap names to trade. These books are free, as free as air. Not only that, why, two weeks to the day, she'll come back again to swap these books for more. Now me, I do not care one hoot for what that book woman has carried around, and it would not bother me at all if she forgot the way back to our door. But here she'll come right through the rain and fog and cold. That horse of hers sure must be brave, I reckon. Comes on a time the world turns white as Grandpap's beard. The wind it shrieks like bobcats do deep inside the dark of night. So here we sit tucked round the fire. No thought to howdy do's this day. Why, even critters of the wild will keep a hid come snow like this. But sakes alive, we hear a tap, tap, tap upon the window glass. And there she be, wrapped tip to toe. She makes her trade right through the crack to keep us folks from catching cold. And when Pat bids her stay the night, she only shakes her head. My horse will see me home, she says. I stand a spell to watch that book woman disappear, and thoughts they go a swirling round inside my head, just like the whirly flakes outside our door. It's not the horse alone that's brave, I reckon, but the rider, too. And all at once I yearn to know what makes that book woman risk catching cold or worse. I pick a book with words and pictures, too, and hold it out. Teach me what it says. And Lark, she does not laugh nor even tease, but makes a place and quiet like we start to read. 
Pap says it's written in the signs how long or short the winter stays. This year, the signs they all foretold of deepest snow of cold eternal. And even though most days were tight as toes pinched into boughten shoes, I do not mind. A puzzlement I know, but true. It's nigh on spring before that bookwoman can stop to visit a spell. And Mama makes a gift, the only precious thing she can, her recipe for berry pie, which is the best grub earthly. Not much I know for all your trouble, Mama says. And then her voice goes low with pride and for making two readers out of one. I duck my head and wait until the very last to speak my mind. Wish there was something I could gift you too. That book woman turns to look at me with big dark eyes. Come here, Cal, she says real gentle, and I come close. Read me something. I open up the book I'm holding, a new one brought this very day. Just chicken scratch I used to figure, but now I see what's truly there, and I read a little out. That's gift enough, she says, and smiles so big it makes me smile right back. 